Hello everybody, how the devil are you? This is Cirque for Sanitarium FM, and today's game is Pocket Rogues, a top-down action RPG with roguelike elements from Ether Gaming. So, the first questions for the uninitiated would be, what is the difference between a standard RPG and an action one, and what the heck is a roguelike game? Well, the thing that differentiates between a standard RPG and an action RPG is the word action. But to be a bit more descriptive, RPGs are just role-playing games, as in any game where you play a role, which is quite vague. So then subgenres started to appear, and the action variation generally just indicates that the fights will be in real time instead of turn-based, so you can run around and attack at your leisure. In Pocket Rogues, the game is split into combat and menu sections, so anytime you're exploring a dungeon, you're also in combat mode. Now, what does roguelike mean? Well, a roguelike game is characterized as another subgenre of the RPG family, and we might be falling down a rabbit hole here, but they have, at least in recent years, been known primarily for two features, procedurally generated levels and permadeath. So now we drop down another level. Procedurally generated levels? They're just randomized tile sets used to form a level, so each time you run a dungeon, the setup will be different. And permadeath? That's a little more tricky to explain. The basics, though, is that when your character dies, they die. No extra lives, no continues, they are permanently dead, hence permadeath. Now this might sound pretty rough having to complete a game without losing once, but that's where the wonder of imaginative developers comes in. There are a few ways that people have dealt with this, but we'll focus on Pocket Rogues because that's the game we're looking at. In Pocket Rogues, each run you do helps you grow, so every death just leads to your next character having a better chance at making it further. The basic gameplay is as such. You control a character, you fight enemies in a dungeon, generally with a sword, but as you play and die, you will unlock other character classes such as archers and mages. Enemies you kill will give you experience and will randomly drop money, items, equipment, health and magic or stamina orbs. And you continue to fight and kill until you either find the exit to the next floor or die. Killing all enemies on a floor will also provide you with a one-time heal, which is an added incentive to clear the floor before moving on, along with all the XP and money that you gain. There are also bosses on some floors. The game will tell you when to expect them, so you're not blindsided. And each time you take down a boss, they are replaced by a relative that's a little stronger, so farming bosses is only feasible for a time. When you collect enough experience, you will level up, which gives you slight stat boosts, and that seems about it. But remember this, because it will come back shortly. You'll also notice that along with usable items and equipment, you also find seemingly useless items that just have a monetary value. Now, this is where death comes in. When you die, all the items in your possession are sold, and the money is credited to your guild, so your next character can use it to upgrade your base. The upgrades to the base carry different effects, such as boosting stats, increasing the amount of money you get, unlocking new classes for your characters, and giving you extra inventory slots, among other things. Certain enemies will also drop gems, which are collected and can be used after death as well to purchase passive upgrades, starting equipment, or even pets that will assist you in your dungeon exploration. And lastly, the other thing you can do between death and your next run is to select a class and use upgrade points. Each class has different abilities and they can be upgraded to become more powerful, uh, although there are limitations on them which you bypass by upgrading the relevant part of your base. Now, how do you get upgrade points? Well, that's the other thing that leveling up does. Would you all remember? Upon death, 
the levels you gained will be transferred into skill points for that class, which means if you want to power up the Hunter, you'll need to use that class. If you play as the Warrior class, the upgrade points will not carry over to the Hunter, and vice versa. Graphically, as mentioned in the opening of the review, the game is a top-down game. Personally, I'm not a fan of this. I prefer an isometric camera where you can see most of your character, like a uh, Hyper Parasite, or a force perspective in which you play it like a top-down game, but your character appears to be facing you, like the Binding of Isaac. Seeing the top of someone's head, shoulders, and occasionally hands and feet doesn't give me much to connect with as a player. That's just my two cents. Although in Australia, we discontinued one and two cent pieces a long time ago, so our opinion skyrocketed in value. It's also worth noting that the bosses look quite good due to their large size and extra detail that come from not just being human-esque bodies. Also noteworthy is that the death screen looks a lot like the Dark Souls one, with the simple message, You died. Overall, the game is deceptively simple, and is a well-made roguelike with progression through runs feeling significant enough to try another run. The levels do feel very samey before long, although there are new levels unlocked after you complete the previous one, they do feel very much like reskinned versions of the same level. But they do introduce new enemy types as well, so there are new things to look forward to. And due to the nature of dying, powering up and trying again, it can be quite enjoyable in short bursts, as well as longer ones if you find yourself getting in the right groove. I'll give the game a 6.5 out of 10, although that could rise as there are multiple levels I have yet to unlock, and the game does receive updates still, at least at the time of this review. Thanks for watching, remember to delve into the dungeons of the Sanitarium FM website and Discord for more reviews, articles, discussion, and of course, music. Ciao for now.